Baker puts them right in the recent winner category and qualifies them automatically in addition to the exemption for next season. So a lot on the line with an early victory. Four bagger attempted here. Machuga is at 44 pins with it. No break this time. Well, he actually got a good break by tripping the 10 out because he could have left a 210 real easy there, Dave. But, you know, the nice part about it is Mike Machuga is keeping the ball in play. He's not going through the nose, keeping it to the right of the head pin. And he's got a relatively easy spare, or I should say real easy spare, just a single pin, two pin. Picks it up. Remember, Machuga is the wild card, where he lost to Lonnie Walchek four games to three last night here at Thunder Bowl near Omaha. But because he had the top qualifying record in the first two qualifying blocks, among the round of eight losers, he was automatically in. But he knew he was in several days really before, I mean Friday, right? Right, when, when him and Lonnie Walchek pulled their match, they knew that the both guys were in. The loser just had the ball in the wild card bracket. And the winner would be uh, seated in the, one of the semifinals. So that takes a lot of pressure off you going into that. Now, obviously, you would rather bowl two games for, your, for the uh, title, title than three. So try to avoid, avoid the wild card. But if you get in, you get in. Right now, Paul Kaler, our statistician, is telling me that Mike Machuga has a 32-pin lead and a possible 248 total. Back-to-back -back two pin pickups there. David Ellis from Banquet Foods, the senior marketing manager. Our wonderful title sponsor, thanks to David, his entire staff. Met several of them before the show. Very excited to be involved in PBA again. And we're glad to have them. Brett Angelo going at a 186 pace. Needs to get something started right here. Seventh grade. Critical time for him. That's a good start. Mike Pachuga's got a big lead, Dave Ryan, but Brad Angelo can really start to factor into the equation by doing that right there. Get some strikes, get your opponent to start thinking something other than what he's thinking about. Put some heat on him. Working on a strike. A double here puts him down 22 pins. Concentration, evident with Angelo. Wow, have a look at it, perfect. Ball was just a pinch left, but it held line. It made a great shot here. You see the hand of Brad Angelo, his hand goes around the side of the ball, opens up at the top, beautiful balance. Look at him posting the shot. He knows he still has a chance. All he needs to do is strike. If he strikes out, he shoots 226. Mike Machuga going at a 218 pace. After three in a row, back to back. Spares for Machuga. And another strike for him. Eighth frame critical, considering the run Angelo's making. And in the sixth and seventh frame, Mike Machuga went light, light, two pin, two pin. It was the first two balls all day that were light for Mike Machuga. That shot was a light mixer. It struck, which tells me that the oil is now pushing down the lane. We are bowling on a wood surface. There's the switch zone. A little bit of carry down. The players are now adjusting to the change of lane conditions. One, one, Lanes recently, Randy, as we see the semifinal match breakdown through eight. The max score for Machuga, 248, Angelo, 226. We surfaced recently the lanes here a couple months ago. Has that affected things today? Well, I think the surface here is beautiful. You know, wood lanes certainly more porous, and more porous than synthetics, and it's a higher friction type of surface. But if you were going to bowl on a wood surface, you'd want to bowl on this one. It's just a beautiful job they did getting the lanes in shape. You know, these bowling balls are so strong, and these players are so strong. The, these lanes take a beating, and wood more so than synthetic. Several balls we talked to like the all wood. One up for him, though. Angelo's got those back-to-back -back strikes in the seventh and eighth frames, trying to make a move. By no means is this over. 
and Brad Angelo can now see light. Now, I don't know if it's Mike Machuga getting overly pumped up and actually throwing it harder, or if the lanes are just breaking down to the point where he can't get his ball back. If the ball pushes down the lane, it's going to delay hook. Another two pin. First time we've seen that in the past four frames from Machuga, and he picks it up. Six, seven, and ninth frames. He left the two pin, each time earning the mark. Now, a chance for three in a row for Angelo. Strike here is down 12. You know, when a player throws a shot and looks at the lane or looks at the floor, he can't figure out what's going on with the lanes. When he throws a shot and comes back and looks at his hand, he knows he made a bad shot. Big shot here, Angelo. Oh! Seven pin. The messenger just won't take it out. Narrowly missed. Since Brad Angelo made the ball change in the fourth frame, he's pured the last six shots. This just a bad break. Five pin doesn't get over to take the seven pin out. He's running it out because he knows that strike will put him right in the back in the match. He's denied. With a spare here and striking out in the tenth frame, he'll shoot 205. Mike Machuga would have to open in the tenth to give Brad Angelo a chance to win. First, the pressure remains on Brad to at least pick up the seventh pin. Can't leave this open. Critical ball here to keep the faint hopes alive. He marks there. You get a rally going, you make the change, you do all the right things, you get a couple strikes in a row, you know you can put heat on your opponent, and then something like that happens, it feels like somebody just hits you right in the gut. Mm. Remember, this is his first ever TV show. We saw how much he was sweating, how nervous he was prior. With the bright lights being on him. All the other matches were not in this arena-type setting. That ball through the nose and high leaves three pins. And the lights are brought in here. This is a setup for TV finals. So it's a much different atmosphere for a player like Angelo who's never experienced it before. Yeah, it sure is. You know what, and you could see that early on, but he really gathered himself and regrouped. That sh last shot just never got it far enough to the right. Leaves a 3-6-10. And again, you see why that spare conversation, that conversion is so difficult in this match is history. Mike Machuga, who bowled at Nebraska. Lincoln, just about 50 miles from where we are here in greater Omaha. Has a lot of friends and family here who saw him bowl in college. He is a Husker through and through. And so far, he has responded to the pressure of bowling as a hometown hero of sorts. Mike Machuga is going to be bowling for the title against Robert Smith. Robert Smith already in the Tournament of Champions. Mike Machuga needs a win to get into the Tournament of Champions, and he will knock out Kurt Pilon if he wins. Kurt Pilon is on the bubble. The last player on that victory list to be on the in list now. But a new winner, like Machuga, knocks Pilon out. Not the case with Smith. He won last year in Japan, but not on the American side of the tour. One step closer is Mike Machuga of Erie, Pennsylvania, the former Nebraska All-American. Wearing the Husker colors has come through through the wild card of the semifinal match. Now head-to-head -head with a flamethrower. Robert Smith, the finals. Come